This is episode 18 of Coaching Connections with Marcus Alvarado. I have a very special guest for you today. He is an outstanding human being. He is a man that understands what it means to give back. Mr. Jan Mahinmi of the Washington Wizards joins me today and we talk about everything from his childhood, the inspirations in his life, and much, much more. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Episode 18, Jan Mahinmi, let's get it. What's up, Marcus? Don, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you? I can't complain at all. Life is, is, is pretty good. You get to stay home and hang out with the family more right now, so I love it. What? It's good for certain of us. Some of us are going crazy, man. It's, it's not everybody that's enjoying this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume you're, you're going a little crazy. Uh, no, I'm not. You know, for me, it's great. Like, honestly, I never get to be home like that. This is, like, first time in forever. So, um, you know, it's good. And on top of that, I have access to, uh, to my little gym so I can still work out, you know, whenever I want. I do my stuff. So it, it's good. It's good to be home. Well, good. Well, uh, I just want to say thank you. I really do appreciate you taking some time. No, man. No, no, no problem, man. No problem. So well, let's hop right into it, John. I mean, uh, so I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, but this whole COVID situation, how you, how you maintaining your daily routines, what does that look like? Uh, I mean, uh, it's been a, it's been a little bit of an adjustment for me. The, the biggest adjustment I had to make was, uh, basically the homeschooling. The homeschooling has been the toughest part because, and I always say that to people, I always wish to have, you know, the first eight hours of the day, um, of my girl's ears, you know, I'm like, you know, this is such a, a crucial time where I feel like I want to have it. I want to have some type of input of, you know, the best hours of the day that, that my girls have. So I always wish for that. But now that I got it, it's a lot more to handle than I thought it would be, you know, like, obviously I have to give a uh, pops to, a. Uh, to the teachers, man, you know, the work they're doing. And, and like me, I only have to do it with three girls, but they have to do it with 20 kids every day. It's, it's, a, it's a unbelievable. So the homeschooling has been the, the toughest part. And uh, as you know, we, my girls go into a French school, so everything is French. And Alexis, my wife, she's no help. Yeah, I mean, she, me. <laughs> she, she can help a little bit, but you know, she could help with the four-year-old, but the, the eight-year-old, it, you know, it's to the point where you have to know your French, you know. So um, I have been, have been doing this a lot, and uh, this has been the biggest adjustment. But then other than that, you know, we try to do it from nine till two, and then we try to be done, and then we try to have some family time. Then I obviously try to uh, get my work done. Uh, as far as, you know, basketball, lifting weights, doing yoga, Pilates. And this is also another good thing um, with the, with the, co the COVID-19. I've got the chance to really dial in on the yoga with the girls. So I felt like we you know, we took some big step towards that. And I always, you know, I'm, I'm a big, big yogi. So I always wanted the girls to be in, in yeah. that with me too. So, um Having that time, we, we had a, a lot of great yoga session in, and I think that it, it kind of opened their mind to, you know, a different aspect, you know. And, I, and other than that, it's been good, man, slow-mo. I, honestly, I enjoy it. And obviously here in San Antonio, it's a great place to be, uh, you know, in like down uh, because, you know, you, it's great weather, you know, we have space yeah. compared to when we in D.C., in DC, we live in you know we live downtown, so you know our neighbors is our neighbors is right there yeah. in front of us to the side, so you know we are close to everybody. But here in San Antonio, we have space. Um, obviously, we have a pool in the backyard, so they they became great swimmer. Uh, <laughs> you know, and and you know we just um it's just a, a slower pace, and uh, I think it's it's great. It's been uh, it's been amazing. I think for, for people and professions where they're always really busy and moving at a fast pace, um, mm -hmm. having this time at home with the families has been, been great. It's going to be hard to go back to work when it's time to, to get after it and leave. 
And I know I'm, a, I'm a missing the kids and, and the wife like crazy. You know that. And now, you know, that uh, it's now official that we, you know, we're going to restart. You know, now my, my mind and the talk in the house is, you know, how do we going to deal with this, you know, coming back. And, uh, you know, this is unofficial, but I'm going to put you in the loop a little bit. And the league and the, the NBA player associations is really talking about having the guys returning to their own team uh, around June 15th, okay. you know. So that's coming up soon. Yeah. And then uh, we have two weeks at home. And then eventually we'll go to right now. They're talking about Orlando. So we'll go, we head to Orlando. We have another two weeks of camp before the season starts. So that pushes us mid-July, end of July. So if I leave without my girls, I probably after staying home for three months, a little bit over three months, I've been leaving them behind for basically a month, a month and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow right now. Absolutely. You know, so right now nothing is officially said, so I can't tell you. Okay, for sure this is what's going to happen, but if it's the case, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do. You know, maybe I. You know, we go halfway. I don't know, but it's it's a tough, like, it's it's the big talk of the house right now. Are we going back to D.C. together, or am I the only one going? Uh, how long the season is going to be, you know? Do we really have a – do they make it where we have a chance to make the playoff, you know? Uh, the other question is, okay, so you bring your family. How do we test? Because I tell you right now, there is no way you stick a Q-tip up uh, Axel or Camille or Amina's nose, they, you might surprise them one time. Yeah. And after that, they're not letting you testing them like that. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. Nobody come near them. So that test is pretty brutal right now. Mm -hmm. Then there's another blood test. There's a swab test. So I don't know how accurate and how fast those tests are right now. So if we we were to bring our family, like how? everything would happen. It's a lot of questions and, and answers that are up in the air. But, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, uh, this is the, the big talk in the house right now. Yeah. And then, and then you got to think like, okay, so a month from, from when you go back or so, school's about to start. How does that look? What, what is that going to look like in the schools? And so a lot of So in D.C., schools has been canceled. So there is no school until next year. Okay. Um, I mean, there is school, but homeschooling, you know. So them being in this, I mean, them being here alone would make it very hard to do the homeschooling without me. Yeah, that's another question. Yeah. So um, you know, it's 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 not um, it's not easy, but at the same time, end of June school is over. You know, basically, there's not a lot going on. So we could we could deal with that. We could deal with that. We could deal with the school. It's not a big issue. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, man. I, I really honestly need some facts. You yeah. know, we need to come up and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is the time frame. And let's go. You know, so... I could really make a game plan. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about your childhood. You know, where'd you grow up? Um, did you have any powerful influences in your childhood? Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, um, well, uh, obviously grew up in France. Uh, Rouen, it's my hometown. It's about an hour, 45 minutes from Paris, up northwest um, from uh, – a mom from Jamaica uh, and a dad from Benin, Africa. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very crazy. The, the mix, you know, of culture that I grew up in was, um, was very unique. But at the same time, uh, there is a lot of resemblance. And when I say that is, you know, where I come from, where my dad come from, Benin, is a country 
that's well known in Africa for their history. We have such a strong history as far as uh, we are a warrior tribe country, you know, and uh, we dealt with a great deal of wars, wars against France, against a bunch of people, you know. So when you go to Benin right now, it's very peaceful, but the people have this warrior type of mentality in them, you know, when you could easily sense it. Yeah. And my mom coming from Jamaica, and obviously, you know, the history of Jamaica and how the people had to be strong. We had a great deal of uh, dealing with slavery and, you know, um, people came, claimed us, claimed that they just, so same team, like, like the resemblance is the warrior side. So I grew up in a very humble, but yet very strong minded hassle, you know, where my dad and my mom were two very strong and well-educated human beings. And even though we didn't have a lot of money, you know, it was interesting. Like, you know, first of all, me and my brothers, my, my siblings, we never felt like we, we, we missed anything or we missed on anything. And, you know, they, um, they always like thought her, I mean, thought us like the, the value of family and the value of fighting. You know, like fighting is good, you know, being resilient, like, you know, understanding like where you come from, you know, and and understanding what's important in life. So, you know, I, it was, um, you know, I had to me one, the, to me, the greatest role model for me is my dad, you know, like for the longest, for the longest uh, I couldn't really understand what my dad was talking, you know, was saying to me yes, sir. early on. And as you get older, you understand more. And and now more than ever, I could tell you that my dad is my biggest inspiration and he's my is my biggest role model, you know. And and of course, my mom along the way has shaped me so much. You know, she um, she was basically the start of the drive that I had in me to be successful, you know, because I wanted to give her everything. Yeah. You know, she is the first lady in my life. And then, you know, she she got everything started. But uh, if you're talking role model, it's my dad. And there's nowhere, there's nobody near him, you know. Uh, it's a lot of people that helped me along in my career, accomplishing some of my goals. Um, but, you know, I... If, if you ask me, my role model is definitely my pops. On your Instagram, you posted a video of, uh, of when you went back to Benin and you hosted a basketball camp to your foundation. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the video, you went, you went back uh, home to where your father was from. And, mm -hmm. and to watch that, it was just – it was amazing. It was inspirational. It was great to see your interaction, you know, um, back home and, and how, um, like you said, that warrior spirit. And you know, I saw that statue and it just uh, resembled strength. and and resilience, yeah. I thought, and I thought, man, you know, everything that I know about you as a person and, and your, your family, and, and then uh, it said, the, you know, the name, you know, Mahinmi, right, it stands for, uh, you know, I will always be your defense, you know, I'm always going to be by your side, and, and you kind of embody that and how you carry yourself, and so I can definitely mm -hmm. see those traits and, 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 and the way your parents raised you, it's, it's really, uh, it was really good to see. Yeah, this is uh, this was definitely something I wanted to share with the world. You know, like a, a little bit of me. You know, actually not a little bit. This is a lot. You know, this is uh, this is half of me. You know, um, a, a lot of people wouldn't really understand because they don't know me personally. But I think that everybody that knows you or been around me, like you yourself and, and other people, they understand a little bit better now you know, who I am and why I'm like that, yeah. you know, and, uh, and uh, I, I've got so many, I, I didn't know it was going to touch so many people, honestly, you know, I, I've done it because, you know, we've been doing this camp for many, many years now, and, you know, I wanted to share a little bit of the work that we're doing, I wanted to, you know, first of all, for some of those people that don't know about Benin, I wanted them to know that Benin is that country, you know, and it's where I come from. So 
Um, and I've got so much um, positive answers and response to it. You know, it was a, uh, it was great. It was a great feeling. It was a, a great, you know, um, experience for me. And honestly, we filmed that last summer, and this little clip that you saw was done like months ago. Yeah. But I've I've never really released it. I've seen it, you know, but I've never released it like that online. And and then uh, you know, this time came and I felt like it was the perfect timing. So I'm like, okay, let's let's put it out there for the people to see. And it was um it was really good. Like people are really responding well and uh it's a um, great feeling. And then and then to see you give back, right, in in the, in the form of like the basketball camp and you're sending, you know, certain kids to uh, basketball without borders and and giving them opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. so, so talk about your camp a little bit and, and giving back to those kids. Yeah. So uh, to me, that's, that's, uh, that's always been in my mind, like, to give back, you know? And then it's how you give back. Like, to me, I feel like uh, I'm in the field of basketball. You know, this is what I do. This game uh, brought me around the world back in twice, uh, you know, uh, I started to play when I was 12, 12 years old. By the age of 14, 15, I was playing for the French national team. And back then, that's when everything started. You know, I had started to travel the world and play different team in Europe, different team um, in, in, in here, uh, different team everywhere. And the game made me travel so far. And when I say I want to give back is in that sense, you know, through the game, I want kids to dream, you know, and to, to feel like, okay, you know, I could do more than just play the game. It's bigger than that, yes. you know. And I started doing camps uh, my second or third year when I was a Spurs. So that's over 10 years ago. And uh, we turned this camp. First, I was like, you know, the special guest, you know. Then I was like, okay, I want my own camp. Yeah. And then we started. Then we started up north. Then we went down south. Then we went to Africa. Then we're doing stuff here now with uh, with one of the AAU program I work with in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, hoops elite, by the way. Yes. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Coach Basse Kearney. Um, so you know, it's it's always been about giving back and giving kids opportunity to dream. You know. Uh, Rather that it's in France or Africa or here, you know, um, I want to I wanna utilize my platform as much as possible. You know, the people that I know, um, obviously being in the NBA, uh, it's a great platform. You know, the NBA is doing a lot of good stuff. They're impacting a, a lot of people's life. So uh, why not? Why not doing myself? Why not doing, you know, why not using my platform to maybe if it's one kid or two or three, that's better than none, you know. Sure, sure. And um, when you start with that mindset, you uh, most of the time you end up surprised. Yeah. You end up surprised by how many kids you touch. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, when we look back over the, the years and then see how many kids we impacted and how many kids that are playing professional in France or they're here in high school, college, or, you know, they're playing in Africa or, you know, it's crazy. The yeah. list is long. So um, to me, this is something I'm very proud of. I'm very, very proud of that. And uh, we put in work and, um, and we, don't, you know, we don't do that for any reward, but to see a kid you know, flourishing on his own. Yeah. You know, to see a kid grab an opportunity. Because for me, that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing. I, I tell you, know my, you know my nephew, Miguel Flores. You know, and, it's, it's, and it's like, I don't like I like to give something. I want to meet you halfway, and I want you to meet me halfway. Yep. And I want you to grab it, and I want you to run with it. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, you know, I feel like me, and I'm not, I'm not the only one. You know, I'm surrounded by great human beings, and, and I have so much help, you know, uh, so much support behind me to, to make all this stuff happening. But all of Everything we do is just to give an opportunity. And to see the kid grab it and run with it, this is the biggest reward in the world, you know. Years goes by, and then I get a, I get a little text, 
you know, from a kid that, you know, we met like 10 years ago. And it's like, okay, I'm playing professional in Germany now. I'm in the German league. This is my team. You know, thank you so much. That's like, whoa. And I, and I think you as a coach, it's kind of the same, you know, kind of the sport, you know. Yeah. When you hear later on in life that one of the kids that, you know, you, um, you coach is doing well, you know, he's a well-respected man, has a family, you know, and, and, and all this stuff. So this is, to me, this is why I'm doing it for. Yeah. And, and something you should be proud of. It's, it's a great thing. And I think, uh, you know, talking to all these coaches that I've been talking to, and they all say the same thing as far as what they appreciate the most is when their kids are, are, are doing well after they leave and they start to flourish and they have their families and their, and their jobs and they come back and just say hello or thank you. And, and maybe, you know, coaches can be hard on the kids and hold them to a standard. Um, mm-hmm. Meet me halfway and we'll help you out. And they may not always understand it at, at a young age, but as they become men uh, and they come back and they say thank you, you know, I didn't get it, but I do now and I appreciate it. I mean, those mm-hmm. are the best feelings in the world. And so, this is the best feeling. And so, but I think also too, like you're, you're out there giving back. And so you're planting seeds in, in all these other guys' heads. So at some point in their careers and their lives, hopefully they're, they're paying it forward to somebody else. You know, no, yes. we hold a, even before I became the head coach of where I work, uh, I know I went to school there with Alexis. And uh, mm-hmm. so even before I became a coach there and worked there, me and one of my best friends host this tournament, an alumni tournament. So if you went to school there, you can play. And, and we raise money through, their entry fees and the people that paint at the door and the concession and sponsors. And, and so we'll give like eight, $10,000 every, every year to, to McCullum graduates that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. scholarship money to help them with college and just help with that opportunity uh, when we can. And, and so like now my kids that are playing ball and they graduate, well, they're playing in the tournament and they're giving back without even realizing it. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're bringing their families and they're, they're paying the money and they're, they're putting into their communities. And so, I think planting those seeds is very important. It's very important, you know. And, and in Africa, we talk a lot about, you know, leaving a trail mm-hmm. behind, you know. And everything you do, you have to be aware that you have to have that presence of mind to understand what you do. You, you eventually want somebody to understand what you do and to do it too. You know, you want to leave a trail behind and you want to make it, you know, not only for yourself, for them, but for the future generations. You know, it's, it's very important that you plant seed, like you said. Like, this is, this is crucial, and this is why I'm doing it. And that's why, you know, I like to call myself a leader. But I don't lead vocally. I'm not a, a loud guy. I'm not some, somebody that you're going to see in the social media or going to be out there. You know, I like to do it with, um, you know, I like to lead by example. You know, I like to do it myself. I like to do it myself, understanding that that kid that's looking at me might think that, oh, okay, he's doing something right. Maybe I want to do something like that, you know. For sure. So to me, planting seed, like you said, it is, it's crucial and it's very important for me. It's the key and the roots of everything I do. Because like me, I was a seed, you know. Yeah. My parents, my elders, you know. They planted that seed. They watered that seed. Yeah. And I'm the recipient, you know. So it, it is what it is, you know. I have to do the same thing for future generation. Absolutely. And you're setting a great example. Um, so, so talk to me about some of the people that helped water that seed. You know, your parents started it, planted the seed, and laid a great foundation. So uh, you played for a lot of organizations, you know, overseas and mm-hmm. in, in the NBA and, and uh, came across, I'm, I'm sure, some, some great coaches along the way. Uh, yeah. so, so talk about a, a few that, that stick out, that, that have helped you, that, you know, obviously helped your game, but, but more so helped you as a, as a grow as a man. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the coach that you remember the most are the one that touches you as a man. Not so much the, the one that, that, you know, taking your game to the next level. You remember the one that really touched you, like, as a person, you know. And uh, to me, um, I want to start with um, one of the first first coach I had in France, uh, Coach Souza. So he, uh, he believed in me, but he believed in the potential in me, like the, 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 
good basketball player that I could be, but he believed more in my character. Yeah. You know, like early on, he saw something in my character that other other coaches didn't see. You know, and for that reason, he never ever. Uh, I want to say doubted that I was going to be successful at some point. You know, it didn't matter the performance on the court. Yeah. You know, whether I had a great game or not, like he was always in my corner and the performance almost didn't matter. So that coach till this day, we still friend uh, is obviously one, one coach called Souza. That's one coach that, you know, to me, I, I, I always, you know, love him and his family for sure. And then the other one is one, obviously, that we all know and share is Coach Pop. Because same with Coach Pop, and I always often say that uh, about Pop, is the way, he's, the way he is with his players, the way he interacts with players and family, I have never seen another coach like that. And when I say that is till this day, if Alexis, my wife, walks at like and terror doing some shopping and Coach Pop is there, he's going to stop and say hi to Alexis and ask us, I mean, ask her about us, you know, how is Jan doing? How's the kid doing? How many coaches would do that? Even though I only played three years for the Spurs and this was my young years, yeah. you know, I wasn't even playing much, you know. But during those th three years, we had time to build a relationship. We built relationship that wasn't based on your performance on the court, you know. And to see that type of leadership, to me as a head coach, yeah. you don't see it everywhere, you know. So to see that type of leadership, it kind of like set your expectation for coaches and what you want in a coach. Absolutely. So... Coach Pop to me is the ultimate leader as a leader. If, 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 you know, not the technical part, not the, uh, just being a good leader and understanding what's leading me, like having empathy, like understanding that it's bigger than just the game and taking the time to get to know people, you yes. know, but not just, you know, hey, how you doing? Like, hey, how are you doing? I wrote talk genuine. to me. Yeah. Genuinely, you know, like I genuinely, you know, going to take you to dinner so we could, I mean, speak about your life. You know, I could tell you about my life. You know, I have never met a coach that was so in tune with his players like, like that. And as far as having that genuine approach, that empathy that you need to have to have people fighting for you night in, I mean, night in, night out. Yes. So it's no, it's no surprise why the Spurs is one of the most successful franchise, you know, in the last decade, you know. So it's, it's you know, it comes from the top and Pop is such a, one of the best leaders of all time when you're talking about sports. Absolutely. And uh, if I have to give you another coach, um, probably be coach Vogel because coach Vogel is kind of like pop, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit less of a technician because pop, you know, pop has a little bit more experience with his system. Um, been in the game for a little bit longer, yeah. but they are very similar as far as they are coaches that makes you want to fight for them, which is, crucial when you do a sport Absolutely. you want your players to want to fight for you so frank vogel is that type of guy you know that type of guy is that has great communication skills and that has that level of empathy that you need to have mm -hmm. so you know this is my top three Souza, pop and vogel Oh, those are, those are great. I, I don't know the first one, but he sounds like a great man. And it sounds like he's got a lot of, of the same characteristics as like Coach Pop, where he's going to love you regardless of your performance. He's just going to love you as a person and, and try to build you up from that.
And when, when, but to me, it was just crazy because I have never had somebody believing in me so much. But it wasn't except for my dad or except for my family, you know. Yeah. I have never seen somebody believing in me so much, even though sometimes I didn't have the performance on the court. Yeah. To me, at first, like when I started the game, I thought that everything was based on what you did on the court. Yeah. You know, I, I thought that coach liked you because you was a good player on the court, you know. And him, he liked me for who I was off the court, like my character off the court. So to me, that was very like... I was like, wow. I was like, you know, I, I really like him. Yeah. You know, I, I could tell my mom, like, hey, Coach Souza. And it, 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 was, it was actually, it was two coach. It was Coach Souza and Coach Mignon. And those two guys were invited, invited to my, my, my wedding. But those two guys, you know, every time I come home, it, it's like, mom, I, I love those coach. And, you know, I played two hours from home, so... Every other weekend when we had no games, I would, you know, I would go back. And my mom and my dad, they never had any fear. You know, they never had any, they would never sad to see me leave because they knew, like, what I was going to. Yeah. You know, they knew what type of character I had on the other side. And it, it, it gives great comfort to understand and, and to know that the kid is going places that he loves and he's surrounded by people that love him for who he is, not the player. Yeah. And that's crucial. And when you got a coach that does that, like you said, it makes you want to play so much harder for him and, and fight for him night in and night out. My body hurts. I'm mentally drained. But but my coach has my back. I'm going to have his back. And, and those are the best kinds of relationships. Absolutely. Best. And, and to uh, give you a little insight, my coaches back then, they didn't let us watch the stats. Mm -hmm. So – one, uh, I want to say my first or my second year, we went undefeated. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we had a squad. We didn't lose one game. Yeah. We ran the table. And one of the reasons why we were so good is we played for each other. Because we, we could look at the stats. We, I didn't even know. It's years later, my coaches, they told me, like, yo, you were having crazy stats. Like, you know, like. <laughs> 2020 games, like, but like, we, I didn't even know I was doing this, you know? Yeah, and that kept one. me humble. That kept me, that kept my mind right as far as I'm playing for my teammate and my guy. I'm playing for my guys. I'm not doing this for the stats. Or I'm not doing this for any other rewards than to win a game, yeah. you know? And everybody on my team, I had a point guard, like, they told me later down, my point guard that year averages 30 points. Not, that hasn't been done in so long. Like, but he didn't even know. He didn't know. He just he was counting in his head. <laughs> you know? That's <laughs> so that's, that's the crazy part. Those coach, like, they had us, like, they understood, like, the mental part that yeah. we, like, they had a vision. They had a plan. And, to, and now to know how many guys became pro, it's unreal. Like, out of 15 guys, I want to say tens of pros. Wow, wow. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's, this, that's, that never happens. So you were pretty – y'all were, were stacks, like you said. You had a bunch of dudes on that team. Man, but back then, nobody, nobody had bet on us. Yeah. You know, we were kind of like, you know, who's these guys? And then we ran the table, and I'm saying we smacking everything, everybody by a lot. That yeah. year, on the road, at home, it didn't matter. Like, it was, it was like – that was my, my first year being away from home. And I was like, whoa, I could do this. This is fun. You get <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. good group of guys, good, good coaches. You know, you go, you smack people on the road. You stop at Whataburger or whatever, you know, <laughs> get burgers. Then you get home. You know, it's, it was fun. And, yeah. you know, you're talking 15 years old kid, 14, 15 years old kid, not knowing they're going to be pro. Just whooping, like it was. Uh, it was, you know, they did. They did it right. That's 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 awesome, man. I can see you light up talking about it, and I can tell yeah, it means no, a lot. Yeah. That's beautiful stuff. <laughs> um, hey, but before we go, uh, I see you know your foundation. You know, it does more than just basketball camps. I mean, you're helping local businesses and and doing all kinds of things for people. So just just talk about that a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, but this is this is one of the things that um, you know I, I always want to be in touch with is uh, helping my community. You know, helping my community, especially in times like that. You know, so um, you know, as you get, you know, I want to say older, or more wiser, or more experienced, whatever. Um, you understand that uh, you know it, it, it's not so much like me as an NBA player. I really understood that my job is great. You know, and it has brought great stuff to me and my family, but it is not an essential work at all, you know. And, you know, when I've seen everybody that were on the front line working and, in, 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 you know, how important some of the job were compared to my job as a professional basketball player, it made me realize that, you know, now it's my time to help them. You know, it's my time somehow to help them. And this is why, you know, having a strong community is very important. And being involved in your community, it's important. And it's a message that, you know, I want to say and I want to, you know, um, and I want every NBA player and everybody that's successful to understand, you know. It is about togetherness, you know. During the year, those people, they help us, you know. Yeah. Those are the people that come in the arena to watch us. Those are the people that buy our jerseys, that stay up late, you know, that are dedicated, that buy stuff for their kids, you know. So we have to understand that if we make that much money, it's because of them, yeah. you know. So it is, it is a our responsibilities in times like that to give back and however you can you know but you have to give back to your community and like me i target it's a very specific target targeted uh community because even though i want to help the whole world it's not possible i want to i want my 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 help to be impactful you know i want i want it to be very driven so i targeted few stuff that you know me and alexis actually it's not me by myself alexis is just as much involved in this as me so as a family a family we we you know we picked few few areas that we uh we uh decided to help and then we went at it you know nursing homes uh we help you know we we realized that the people that pick up our trash twice a week like we realize how valuable those people are yeah. you know can you imagine it's quarantine everybody's is home what's going on man yeah. can you imagine the amount of trash oh that yeah would be sitting in the streets if it wasn't for them keep doing their job every week picking up everybody's trash so recognizing little stuff like that so i'm like i decided to call the people um that come in Pick up my trash. It's about four guys. I know them. You know, I call their buses and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna grant you this. Thanks for your help. Yeah. You know, nursing home, same thing. Or now I know a lot of small, small businesses uh, being in San Antonio that, you know, obviously are in need and you know, rather to give something to a bunch of places that I really don't know, then I I'd rather just help my community and and be like, okay. There it is for you guys. Thanks for your help. And, you know, I, I hope that this will give you a little boost. You know, so this is this come really from a genuine place. And um, I also understand that this might be only a very little help, but I want to help. You know, I want to help. And uh, this is why we started this. You know, this is another aspect of the foundation. Well, and just like with the kids, you're planting seeds in and other adults as well, right? They, they see you leading the way and, and helping out and, and hopefully it inspires them to, to do the same that have the resources and, uh, and things to help people out. So great stuff, Jan. Great stuff. Well, I, I just, that's, that's it, man. I appreciate your time. I uh, don't want to keep you from the family too long. Mark, is you breaking out? Can you hear me now? Yeah. We're good. I just want to say thanks. You know, I appreciate your time, taking some time to talk life and, and your journey today. Did you freeze again? Yeah, it's better now. He's back. You're back on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs>
No, I just wanted to say thanks, man. I really do appreciate you, what you do for everybody, and, and just taking time out to talk about your life and your journey and, and how passionate you are about, about just giving back. And so thank you for the time, Jan, and, and thank you for being you. Thank you, Marcus. Yes, sir. Thank Tell you, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir, man. Tell the family I said hi. You guys be safe out there. Likewise. Yes, sir. You have a good day, bro.